Today, let's install new Aqua 600 GPD tankless RO system. The new Aqua 600 GPD is a two filter under the counter RO system. Overall, a much more slender package than our 800 GPD unit. The fittings are simple, drain, pure water, your input, and at the top, your faucet and your power. With two easy to change filters, that lock in place. Additionally, we'll be showing you how to install the optional alkaline mineralization filter and the ultraviolet sterilizer. Let's review the installation components. First up is the installation manual. A feed water adapter so you can tap right off of your cold line. Leak stop valve that'll keep your cabinet from getting flooded. Drain saddle. Faucet with an LED status light quarter inch tubing, three eighths tubing, retaining clips, and a power supply. Let's look at the tools you'll need for the job. You want an adjustable wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, black marker, a razor knife, Phillips screwdriver, and a quarter inch drill bit on a good drill. Let's start by installing the water feed adapter. Make sure that your valves are off and open the faucet. Place a towel down on the bottom of the cabinet. Let's tap into the cold side. Now, depending on your fittings, you have this fitting here. It could either work for the top or it can work for the bottom. In my case, I'm going to need it on this side. Just like that. When connecting the feed water adapter, ensure that the rubber seals are in place at each connection point to ensure a leak-free installation. Since there's three fittings here, you'll want to start with the lower nut and make sure it's tight. Then move up to the next one and make sure it's tightened all the way. And finally, the top one. Let's install the leak stop valve. I like to put this below the feed water adapter for easy connectivity with the tubing. Just a couple screws on each side is all that's needed to hold it in place. Lifting the lever up prevents flow, so it's a good idea to do at this point. Next up is installing our drain saddle. So this clamps on each side of the pipe and allows it to drain out properly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it here. You want it before the trap system, okay? You don't want it after that. If you have a sink that's a double bowl sink and you have another horizontal pipe here, you could drill the hole in the top of that and that would work out fine. Otherwise, it goes right on the side here. It's gonna be a perfect fit. Take our black marker and I'm gonna mark a hole right on the side here as our spot to drill. With our quarter inch drill bit, around the side here comes with this foam gasket that has adhesive on one side so what we'll do is we'll peel that off and place it right over the hole and make sure you get it exactly over it so that you can aim your saddle on there properly Make sure you line it up. I would take another drill bit. Be careful not to damage the fitting, but you're just poking it through like that. It's pretty loose. I would put it in the hole. See it in there like that. That'll help you line it up. Then you can take the other side. One thing to notice is the saddle on this side it has a space for the nut to fit into so that it doesn't turn. That way all you need is a Phillips screwdriver to tighten it. Put your bolt through there. Once you have the nuts threaded onto the screws, start tightening them down. Once it's kind of snug, take your drill bit, put it in there, and make sure your hole is lined up. Otherwise, your drain will be off. That looks good there. Be careful not to move it. Just keep snugging it down. I like to go back and forth. The sides are clamped all the way shut. You can see a gap closing up here. Right. 
Now it won't budge at all. Should be good to go. So let's install the faucet. I noticed that these two rubber washers were stuck together, so I peeled them apart. So make sure that one of the rubber washers stays up under this base. Otherwise, let's just unscrew this big plastic nut. This is the power connector for the LED indicator light. Let's go ahead and feed the wire down through. We'll even feed one of the washers through. If your installation requires drilling, locate the spot on your countertop where you would like the faucet and make sure that it hangs over the sink appropriately. The countertop we are installing on today is quartz, but keep in mind that these methods apply to granite or any other stone countertop that is prone to cracking. If you are drilling through quartz or granite, you will need to use clay to make a pool of water for drilling as so. When drilling into quartz or granite, you have to use a one inch diamond tipped hole saw drill bit like we're using. When drilling into wood, laminate, or other non-stone countertops, drill a pilot hole using a quarter inch drill. Then switch to a one inch drill bit to finish the job. Before we place the faucet in the mounting hole, we're gonna go ahead and attach our quarter inch tubing. We'll start by pulling the clip off of here and then pushing the tube in all the way, okay? Once it's in there all the way, we'll put the clip back in there. This way, we won't have to reach up under the sink to attach our tubing. Grab the ends of ends of the connector and the tubing. Find this rubber washer. Put the tubing through the washer. That way both of these things are through it, like that. Take our big plastic nut. Going to put it our connector through. Please note, it's important to have your water pressure in the correct range for the system. This system's operating pressure is 14.5 to 58 PSI. So please refer to the water testing video for more information and how to adjust your water pressure. You can click the link above. All right, if you followed along each step of the installation manual, we've arrived at the faucet installation section on page 11. Now, the next thing we need to do is do system connections where you actually mount the unit in the cabinet and connect all the tubing. But since we are adding an alkaline system and a UV system, we're going to go ahead at this point and connect both of those. So this is the UV and alkaline system installation. Page 17, it shows a possible layout in the cabinet. Your main unit, alkaline filter, UV filter. Let's go ahead and see how it fits in our cabinet. Considering the main RO unit is a little under five and a half inches wide, I'm going to place the alkaline filter just on the base of the cabinet towards the back. So the main unit will go here and then the alkaline filter will go there. There you go, we have around six and a half, so we'll be fine. Then above that, we'll put the UV filter and we'll hang it directly on the wall above it. Let's talk about mounting these units. Now, this one I won't mount to anything since it has a flat bottom. I'm just gonna set it on the cabinet floor. You could mount it on a wall by spacing two screws an inch and a half apart. So that's up to you. Mounting the UV filter has two slots in the back that a mounting plate fits into. The mounting plate gets fastened to the wall with screws or double-sided adhesive. Then all you do is you hang it like that and it's stuck to the wall. I'm gonna use the included mounting disc. It's a good idea to press this firmly on there, warm it up even. 
Also in the package, you'll find two short screws, two long screws with inserts. I'm gonna mount the plate about seven inches or so above the alkaline filter. Let's start by connecting the faucet to the UV sterilizer. When cutting tubing, have a fresh blade and cut 90 degree angle straight down. Just like that. When determining your length of tubing, you want a nice gentle loop with no hard 90 degree turns. To connect it, let's go ahead and move the unit off the mount. It says in and out. Gonna go on the out. Connect a second piece of tubing on the in. Remember the blue locking clips? Next up is our alkaline filter. If you notice, it says in and out. Move the clip. Push it all the way in. Let's go ahead and place the main unit in the cabinet and pull the blue and white plugs out. Just push in on the gray part and then pull like that. Use the second piece of tubing to connect to the drain. Push it all the way in. Then a fresh piece of tubing to the pure water outlet. Don't forget your blue clip. Then a fresh piece of larger tubing to the cold water input. Let's connect the faucet power right on the back of the unit with the screw down nut to hold it in place and the main power to the unit. Let's connect the pure water line to the alkaline filter. Place our blue clip, connect the drain to the drain saddle. Blue clip. This is the out from the leak stop valve that goes directly to the unit's input. This is the line coming directly from the feed water adapter to the leak stop valve input. Let's connect it to the feed water adapter. Now this is the time to look over every single connection in the entire system and make sure that every tube is pushed in all the way. If it's not, it definitely will leak. So double check now before we start up the system. Let's go ahead and open up a leak stop valve cartridge. These are an expandable cartridge. If it gets wet, it expands like five times its size. Turn the main faucet valve on and the feed water adapter. Push down the paddle, plug in the units. After you hear those beeps, the system will start to fill up with water and flushing it through every part of the system. Once the unit has ran for a minute or so, go in and check every single connection. You'll notice a leak right away as it pushes water through the system. Make sure and tighten up any of those connections. It's time to flush the system. Open the faucet and allow the water to run for 30 minutes. This will flush the new filters of any loose filter media. It's absolutely normal for your water to have a slight gray tint during this process. In 30 minutes, shut the faucet off and the system will shut down and be ready for use. Let's cover filter changes. First, unplug both units. Turn off the feed water adapter and just pull out the filters one at a time and replace with the new ones. Replace stage one at the six and 12 month mark. Stage two is replaced at 24 month mark. Alkaline is replaced at 12 and 24 month mark. Lock it in place. Open the feed water adapter. Plug in the units. Listen for the beeps. Once the system starts, let's reset the filter reminder. Hold the button for the corresponding filter number on the system that you've replaced for three seconds until you hear a chime. 
The icon will now turn to blue indicating the filter has been reset successfully. Then follow the system startup and flushing process. Please reach out if you need any further assistance. From all of us at New Aqua, thank you.